Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Aerial firefighting has evolved significantly over the years with the development of specialized firefighting aircraft and equipment. During the early 1900s, it was very tough for firefighters to tackle wildfires in rugged, remote, or inaccessible terrains. Therefore, the United States began to employ biplanes and other aircraft to drop water and fire retardants on forest fires. Soon after, helicopters equipped with buckets and tanks were used to reach remote areas and counter wildfires. In the early 1980s, the invention of the Bambi bucket by Don Arney marked a significant advancement in aerial firefighting. This collapsible bucket design allowed helicopters to collect water from natural sources and release it with precision over fire zones. The capacity of these buckets ranges from a small 270-liter Bambi to the giant 9,800-liter bucket carried by heavy-lift helicopters. Since its production, the Bambi bucket has undergone continuous development reflecting new technologies in manufacturing and materials. Bambi Bucket Design uses an instant deployment system, IDS, that features a hub-and-spoke mechanism to expand the mouth of the bucket to fill water automatically. The bucket is heavier on one side, which makes it unstable on the water, which is why when it touches the water's surface, it immediately tips and sinks. In order to dump the water from the bucket, the pilot has to push the dump switch. The weight of the water inside the bucket will cause the fabric dump valve to turn inside out through the bottom of the bucket, providing a passage to the escaping water and producing the best possible dump pattern. The Canadair CL415, also known as the Bombardier, mimics the concept of the Bambi bucket drop when it comes to extinguishing wildfires. It is an amphibious aircraft with the ability to scoop water from natural sources while in flight. The aircraft floats on the surface of the water and fills its tanks in a matter of seconds. The Bombardier can make multiple drops on fire, carrying up to 1,620 gallons of water during each drop. The 
Canadair CL415 can access remote areas that might be difficult to other aircraft to reach. Forest fires pose a significant threat to wildlife and the population living in the nearby areas. Therefore, airplanes with all kinds of technologies are used to extinguish wildfires across the world. Good start. The California Department of Forestry and Fire Protection, CAL FIRE, uses large aerial tankers, LATS, to combat wildfires across California. To train their ground crews, the department conducts several demonstrations, such as an S2 air tanker dropping 9,000 pounds of fire retardant in controlled environments. Cal Fire is also planning to use very large air tankers, VLATs, in the future unlocking the capability to combat large-scale wildfires, dropping up to 170,000 pounds, which is almost equal to six Type 3 engines falling from the sky. Any military cargo aircraft can be converted into an aerial tanker with the help of a genius U.S. invention called a Modular Airborne Firefighting System, MAFS. In 1974, the first MAFS unit, designated as MAFS-1, was produced and used on the C-130 Hercules. It consisted of a series of five tanks containing water or retardant mounted inside the aircraft. An aircraft equipped with MAFS-1 has a straight drop configuration, meaning it drops almost 2,700 U.S. gallons directly out of its cargo compartment two nozzles, allowing for a wider coverage area. However, the system was less precise and was developed over the years. The modern version of the system, known as MAFS-2, turn the nozzles towards the plane's side door, allowing for more controlled retardant drops. MAFS-2 is easier to install and remove as it incorporates one large tank instead of five in MAFS-1, with an increased capacity of up to 3,000 gallons. It consists of two onboard air compressors that can pressurize the system in the air, ultimately eliminating the need for the aircraft to return back to the ground-based facility. The C-130 Hercules is the go-to aircraft for using MAFS, as it does not require any prior structural modifications. The C-130 takes off carrying water or fire retardant toward the wildfires and drops it from a height of 150 feet.
The air crew activates the system to release the retardant through a discharge tube located in place of the left rear paratroop door of the aircraft. The pilot maneuvers the aircraft in different directions to control the drop pattern of the fire retardant. Aerial firefighting can help overcome fire on rugged and unreachable lands. However, planes cannot be used to counter fires on boats and large ships at sea. For that purpose, organizations use fireboats with multiple hoses and nozzles capable of spraying thousands of gallons of water up to a distance of two football fields. Modern fireboats feature fire monitors that are specialized nozzles mounted on the deck that can rotate and direct water streams to target fires from different angles. Powerful pumps on board the fireboats transfer the water from the surrounding water bodies to the fire monitor, which is then used to extinguish the flames on the vessels, saving numerous lives. Massive diesel generators are used to create electricity to provide power for the pumps and other equipment on the fire boats. On the back, you can see two real big nozzles that we have on the back, and those are, those are really good. Power in those are two big fire pumps that are powered by these big diesel engines down here. Inside the fire boat, the command center features a steering wheel like that of a car to maneuver the fire boat in the water. The crew members use gear shifters to control the thrust or propulsion of the fire boat. When it comes to the skies, Firefighting systems demonstrate remarkable versatility and innovation in combating fires across varied terrains. Whereas on the seas, fireboats equipped with high capacity water cannons protect sea vessels. Firefighting systems are progressing rapidly, and we might see planes and fireboats employing fully automated nozzles and hoses in the future. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.